an unthinkable event. What are you doing right now? Scrolling through Facebook, watching YouTube, checking your bank account? But imagine, in just a blink of an eye, everything disappears. Your phone can't connect to Wi-Fi, you can't search on Google, the TV, the radio, silent. No news, no emails, not a single piece of information. You step outside and realize you're not the only one facing this issue. The entire world is sinking into a crisis no one saw coming. The internet has collapsed. And this is just the beginning. Hour one, the unnerving silence. A day that seemed completely ordinary until everything changed in the blink of an eye. In office buildings, employees stared at their computer screens in confusion. Emails wouldn't send. Virtual meetings were abruptly cut off. No websites could load. They refreshed their pages, only to be met with a cold, unyielding message. No internet connection. Out on the streets, people stopped, scrolling through their phones in vain. Messaging apps, social media, news platforms, all dead. In cafes, customers grew anxious when their credit cards and digital wallets no longer worked. A strange silence spread through the city. No one had an answer. No one knew what was happening. At major news stations, journalists frantically called and texted their technical teams, but the servers weren't responding. Reporters attempted to post updates on social media, but every attempt failed. The morning broadcast was supposed to go live, but instead, the TV screens showed nothing but static. In the massive data centers of the world's biggest tech corporations, IT engineers rushed between endless rows of servers. The LED indicators still glowed, but the systems were unresponsive. They rebooted the machines, tested alternate connections, but every effort ended in the same crushing realization. Nothing was working. On the central monitoring screen, error messages began stacking up, one after another, from every continent. This wasn't just a city-wide issue, not just one country. It was global. Inside a high-security cyber operations center, an emergency meeting was called. Experts scanned the global data network, their faces growing pale as the truth set in. This wasn't a minor outage. This was a catastrophe. Hour six. When money becomes worthless, six hours have passed. What started as an inconvenient glitch in the morning had now become something far more unsettling. Anxiety turned to panic as people began to realize this wasn't just a temporary outage. Bank cards no longer worked. A quick grocery run became an impossible task as card readers flashed error messages. ATMs, once a lifeline in emergencies, now stood lifeless. Screens black, buttons unresponsive. People flooded into banks, demanding cash withdrawals. But with no digital infrastructure, there was no way to access their own money. Inside the world's financial hubs, chaos erupted. Stock market screens, which normally flickered with constant updates, had frozen. No new data, no transactions. The financial world had come to a terrifying standstill. Investors stared at each other, their faces drained of color. Trillions of dollars were now locked in limbo, yet no one could move a single cent. The effects rippled far beyond individuals. Logistics companies, shipping industries, and global supply chains ground to a halt. International trade froze. Cargo ships sat idle at ports. Trucks waited at warehouses, unable to receive orders or process deliveries. The backbone of the global economy was severed. Hour 18. Transportation paralyzed. Power grid destabilized. 18 hours have passed since the internet collapsed. By now, people understood. This was no temporary glitch. The world was spiraling into a full-blown crisis. But what no one had anticipated was the total breakdown of transportation, a system that, until now, had been taken for granted. At airports worldwide, chaos reigned. Hundreds of flights were canceled without warning. Passengers stood in endless lines, staring helplessly at blank flight information screens. Planes that had taken off before the blackout were now stranded in midair. Pilots, cut off from air traffic control, were flying blind. No GPS, no guidance, nothing but endless uncertainty. 
their aircraft drifted through the skies like lost souls in a void, waiting for instructions that would never come. On the ground, the situation was no better. Subway systems screeched to a halt, leaving passengers trapped inside darkened tunnels. With no cell service, no emergency intercoms, and no way to reach the outside world, fear spread quickly. Above ground, roads descended into chaos. With no traffic lights to regulate the flow, intersections became war zones of honking horns, screeching tires, and inevitable crashes. Traffic officers tried desperately to restore order, but without radio communication, they were left shouting directions in the midst of an ungovernable storm. Then came the next blow. Power plants, reliant on internet-based monitoring, began failing. The once intelligent electrical grid had become blind and unresponsive. Entire cities plunged into darkness. Neighborhoods that had once been alive with neon lights and the hum of electricity now stood eerily silent, consumed by an unnatural void. Inside high-rise buildings, the problems compounded. Elevators froze, trapping people between floors. Office towers, once bustling with life, became cold, empty shells. Technology had once been humanity's greatest tool, its ultimate power. But now, stripped of its lifeline, mankind was beginning to understand a chilling truth. They had never been in control. They had merely been its servants. And the worst part, the nightmare had only just begun. Hour 24, the world at a crossroads. A full day has passed. One day without the internet. One day without connection. One day without data, news, or control. Nations with emergency protocols acted swiftly, declaring states of emergency. Military forces were deployed to the streets to maintain order. In some cities, crowds poured into the streets, desperate for answers. But no one knew the truth. No government official, no journalist, no expert could confirm anything. The world wasn't collapsing because of a lack of information. It was collapsing because no one knew what was real. With television stations off the air and the internet gone, civilization turned to the relics of the past. Old radio transmitters crackled to life, broadcasting the same hollow message over and over. We are investigating the cause. Please remain calm. But in a world accustomed to instant updates, where every breaking news alert was just a tap away, waiting in uncertainty was its own kind of nightmare. In war rooms and emergency government meetings, leaders scrambled for solutions. No emails, no video conferences. The world's most powerful figures were now forced to communicate the way their predecessors had a century ago. Written notes, military radio channels, and face-to-face -face briefings. A world once defined by cutting-edge technology had been reduced to its most primitive form. And then, the inevitable question arose, the question no one could yet answer. Would the internet ever return? If it didn't, what would humanity do? Would we learn to adapt? Or was this the beginning of a slow and inevitable descent? A world where the modern era unraveled piece by piece until all that remained was chaos. No one knew. No one knew what was coming next. But one thing was certain, the world after today would never be the same again. One day, one week, one month, one year, and the internet never comes back. How would the world change? Would we learn to adapt and survive? What do you think? If the internet disappeared forever, how would you adapt? How would your life change? Drop your thoughts in the comments below. Let's discuss, because one day, this might not just be a theory, it might be our reality.